Let's take a closer look at the Black Series figure of Wrecker from the second season of The Bad Batch. Villa Veracino, living the Star Wars life. Hello there, and thanks for visiting the Villa Veracino YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to be taking a closer look at the Hasbro Black Series 6-inch figure of Wrecker from the animated series The Bad Batch. This is the Season 2 variant, as you can see by the text here on the front. It says Wrecker Mercenary Gear. So this is where they've kind of been on the run a little bit longer. So their gear is a bit more weathered and they've got a bit more of like a customized paint scheme. So as you can see, we've got some really interesting yellow accents here. I'm really keen to see what this figure looks like in person because as you can see alas this figure came out during Hasbro's thankfully short-lived windowless plastic free packaging era so I don't know what the figure inside looks like you know they're packaged up in cardboard and paper trying to be you know environmentally friendly but I tend to keep my packaging so it is not really single-use plastic for me in particular so before I open it up I'm going to take a closer look at the packaging this is pretty standard for the windowless black series line. We can see that we have sort of a gloss image here of the figure on the front, which does look pretty cool. I can't wait to sort of see all those details in person. We've got this dark maroon color stripe for the Bad Batch. And because this is a variant uh, from the first Wrecker Black Series figure, this one is Wrecker Mercenary Gear. So we can kind of see some of the details there. He's got a blaster, a knife, and his helmet visible there. So on the side, we've got this really cool artwork. We can see Wrecker standing here. We've got like uh, an elbow here from somebody else because he is holding a knife here that I think looks super cool. And we've got that sort of color tone coming in with the bottom and it says Wrecker Mercenary Gear there as well. And just at the top, you can see there's like an explosion or something happening behind Wrecker that I think is really fun. So on the back, we have the bio for the figure and I like that this is actually about Wrecker himself. This isn't just about the Bad Batch series like some of the other Black Series figures on the back. It says Wrecker Mercenary Gear. Far stronger than the average clone, Wrecker barrels through any obstacle thrown his way. He's also the resident demolitions expert, a job he performs with much enthusiasm. And then that is repeated in different languages. This Wrecker is number 14 from the Bad Batch series of Black Series figures. We can see a lot more sort of copyright and safety text again there on the bottom. Now on this side, instead of there being like a window as there were on the window boxes, we've got a little bit of a preview of the figure. So we can see we've got the figure. It says that it is 6.6 .6 inches high or 16.8 centimeters. And we have the figure pictured here with a helmet a blaster, a knife, and a backpack. So I didn't realize uh, that the backpack is going to be a separate piece. I guess I should have uh, known that. Uh, they always do tend to put jetpacks and things like that separately. And we can see that plastic-free packaging block of text there as well. So I have been super keen to open this up, especially with watching the new season three episodes of The Bad Batch. Don't worry, I won't go into any spoilers in this one, but I am super keen to see all the details, particularly this interesting, there's like weathering and some sort of paint apps that are really unique to Wrecker. So let's open it up. I'm going to go in from the bottom. I am expecting the classic sort of cardboard tray and paper wrappings that I have found in some of the other uh, windowless boxes. So let's see if this one follows the same pattern. Let's see. Oh, it's quite stiff in here. Okay, let's see. There we go. Okay, so yep, all wrapped up in paper. We've sort of got like the the mummified figure here wrapped in black series branded tissue paper then we've got the slightly more waxy paper sort of packets here for the accessories tucked in here so i'm going to get those out so got a little bit of sellotape here that i'm going to have to snip through that's always a little bit of a fuss because they wrap them in tight okay let's see i just got to get these ones Let's see how easy this is going to be. Okay, there we go. 
and wiggle him through a little bit. Okay, there we go. Just going to put that cardboard out of the way. Okay, so there we go. Just going to take all this. It's kind of like Christmas opening up these figures, but it does make me anxious. I'm really hoping this one has a good paint job and no broken bits. Okay, <laughs> they always look a little bit wonky, don't they, when they've been all wrapped up. His head's just on a little bit of a tilt here. It gives him an interesting expression. Okay, so there he is. Just going to open up the accessories and then I might just zoom the camera in uh, for a better, closer look at the details. Let's see, you can see his knife here. Really cool. There's some interesting sort of metallic paint there on the blade. Oh, we've got a box. So, oh, this is his helmet. Okay, that's kind of interesting. It's kind of cute. It's in like its own little box. There we go. And of course, some pretty unique customized paint there for his helmet. It's so iconic. And then we have his blaster. I love the Republic Commando style blasters. Very cool. And then in the last pouch, we have his removable backpack. So there, I'm just going to adjust the camera angle so we can take a closer look at all the details, get them all assembled up and then see those poses and details up close. So now I have the figure out of the packaging. We can take a closer look at the sculpting and the details before I go on to the accessories and articulation and some poses. So first off, I really like the sort of quirky expression they have for Ricker. He is definitely more of a comedic character in the Bad Batch show. So I like the expression they chose for him. And I think the details of his face are pretty well done. Like I say in a lot of my videos, I do like to look at the face paint in particular of my black series figures which you cannot do in those windowless boxes so it's always like fingers crossed hope it looks good um, but yeah even the detail on the eye and of course his kind of bung eye that is white and we can see it's kind of his uh, damage here sort of scarring on the side of his head we've got a little bit of like paint accenting here on that sort of scarring which is really nice and sort of subtle over here it's clearly part of the plastic skin skin tone mold but over here there's just like a, just a little bit of shading i think it kind of raises it up a little bit more and we've got just a little bit of accenting to the lips and the eyebrows overall i think that that looks pretty cool i can i can sort of hear his voice when i look at this face which i think is fun we've got so many different colors here across his armor i don't even know where to begin we've got just like a ton of different colors here we've got gray dark gray some orange stripe detailing we've got sort of a yellow mustard color accent trim this is green then we've got a different kind of gray that's almost like a bit more of a mud brown a brown belt with gold details then we've got another sort of sort of muddy green here on the sleeves another gray almost a black I think this is black here the same brown as the belt for the gloves and then we've got gray and black on the leg armor another color brown here and then brown on the boots and some orange striping there is a lot to go over first quick impressions I don't see any major paint flaws that are really bothering me the one thing that I guess I was kind of relieved about I guess is because this is a weathered look armor so it's not pristine um, so it almost doesn't matter too much if there's like a slight scratch or some paint that's just like a little bit funny you can kind of pass it off I guess as a little bit of weathering I can see one little element here the gray from that top piece of armor paint has just kind of leaked over a little bit onto that mustard colored trim very very minor it's also towards the back of the character so if you pose them to the front I'm not going to see that on display the other side looks more cleaner we can see that there's even top down details like the orange triangle here on his shoulder details on the back we can see the peg for attaching that backpack there so hopefully that snaps on nicely and yeah and we can see we've got a holster here that's going to be interesting to uh, take a look at we've got sort of like a strap here I wonder how hard that's going to be to put that in there and we've got like a weight that's kind of painted on over the top a little bit of weathering here 
Um, but again, it's a weathered look. This is obviously going to be a component of his outfit that would get a lot of wear and tear if you are uh, sheathing and removing a weapon frequently as much as the Bad Batch do. So I get that. And certainly if the weapon is there, it's going to be covering that. I really like the gold details on his belt. Those look nice and clean and they really catch the light. I like those. I'll put his arm back down properly there. Overall, I can, I can, hopefully this is, shows up on camera. I'm just picking up all the details in person. There is like this sort of little pitting and weathering and scratches across the armor that give it just a real sort of used look. I wonder what color segment is going to be the best to show it because this is just fantastic. There are like these tiny little lines on his thighs and these little dimples where they're sort of, you know, roughed up and, it just looks really, I know, I know some people really fuss with Black Series painting, you know, and they go in and they sort of airbrush and sort of add their own weathering details. But for a mass produced toy, I think this is really well done. You know, you can achieve a lot if you sit down for a, a few hours and go over every figure individually, giving them special care and attention. But for a mass market toy, this looks really nice. I like these deep scratches across the chest. And we've even got, you know, some armor lines and some weathering here on the shoulders as well. This looks really good. I really like this. I like the different colors. It's like just really interesting. A couple of the figures that I've opened up really recently um, I tend to be sort of a little bit more not monotone, but like a limited palette of colors. So I'm really enjoying just the range of colors here and all the different materials that obviously Rekka's costume has all the details. So Hasbro has to replicate that. So it's not really their design, it's the, it's the show designers, but I am really liking all the details here. And I think it's fun, just the, the proportions of this figure. It's just really capturing Rekka's personality and his build from the show. So I'm just, I'm really keen. I'm going to check out these accessories next. So we have a pretty plain gray backpack. It looks like it is cast in this plastic. We've got some really interesting weathering that is sculpted into it. Some really fine lines. And again, that kind of dimpling to sort of show the weathering. And then we have some minimal orange accenting stripes, which look very tidy. That's really nice. And then we just have a shaped peg to help you put it on the right way up. So they're hoping this will match up to uh, to his back peg hole really nicely. Some of these, they can be a little bit hard to click in and they always kind of look like they want to pop off on you. So yeah, some simple details there on the side, different canisters and stuff like that. Overall, pretty cool. Okay, then we've got his knife. Pretty long, pretty beastly looking knife uh, for human scale. We've got a simple brown uh, sort of handle here, hilt, and a nice metallic blade. I like that it doesn't feel clunky and plasticky. It actually looks kind of sharp, you know. I know it's plastic. It's not sharp at all to actually touch or, uh, you know, pose. But this uh, uh, ridged area is kind of the teeth of that. Kind of feel like you could actually cut something if you sort of... um really tried but yeah it's nice and refined not not sort of um thick and clunky i like i like that and then of course we have the iconic sort of republic commando style blaster rifle here looking very cool plus just straight black plastic i think i don't i don't see much in the way of I don't even know that there's much weathering here. I get the feeling that this is because this is a sculpt that they use across the uh, sort of Republic Commando Bad Batch range. So I'd be curious to see. I'll have to compare it later to some of my other figures that come with this same uh, standard issue gun. See if it really is identical. But yeah, it does the job. It looks cool. It looks big and hefty. And yeah, very cool Republic Commando gun for Wrecker. And of course, last but not least, his iconic helmet. So some of the helmets across the Hasbro line are rubbery. This one has just a little bit of flex and I can kind of see why they wanted to put it in a little cardboard box of its own because of this paint job. I think if this arrived with some scratches or defects that that would be really sad. So looking at it closely with my eyes, 
I don't see anything sort of major here, which is nice. We've got the sort of the little scratches that are obviously intentional and part of that paint job, particularly on the white. Then we've got the predominantly gray body with a red accent there on the back and that front face detail. I would absolutely love to have this as the Black Series sort of replica helmet line. I know that they may not ever go into, you know, the deep archives of all the individual characters of Star Wars that wear customized, personalized helmets, but uh, I, I love the Bad Batch helmets. I think that that would be a really cool lineup. Who knows? Maybe one day they'll get around to it. There is like a little sort of uh, cast in scratch here just to add to some of that weathering to tie in with the figure. I like how fine detail it gets around the sort of teeth and mouth area, the sort of the grill of the helmet here. That looks really cool. Inside that is like just plain black. We can sort of see the base color of the plastic there. Really interested to see how well this is going to fit over his head. I get a little bit anxious sometimes about putting helmets on and off over action figures' heads, but he doesn't have any hair, so I'm hoping this will fit a little bit better, and there isn't painted hair to scratch either, so very keen to see how this one's going to fit. So I guess next up, let's try and put all these accessories on him, but I guess the best thing to do, I'm really keen to see how everything fits, I actually, I think we'll do some of the posing before we start putting stuff on his legs and things like that. Um, so I like testing out the shoulders um, because uh, particularly with the armored characters here, we've got a little bit of movement with that shoulder bell. It's kind of got a plastic strap that's sort of just flexing there at the top. So I think hopefully that's going to help with his arms and he also he's a kind of a musclier figure I don't actually know okay we can get fully out to the side it's a little bit stiff and I'm also just a little bit um, careful with these attachments I came across one black series figure that had kind of a loose attachment and I was really worried I'd broken it um, but yeah we've got some good movement I think I think this is just sculpted armor that's not a yeah that's not a hinge we've got some sculpted sort of um, bicep armor here and we've got that's pretty nice and free movement on his elbow um, with some joints that really kind of snap in we've got his neck peg which has the sort of the black neck seal painted on it does actually move around pretty well um, side to side and all that kind of stuff and I can see a little bit of movement around his neckline and jawline but to be honest his neck wants to move more than his head does so I feel like that's going to take a little bit of work um, to try and sort of move his head perhaps a little bit differently to his neck but yeah we can get some some reasonable movement around there so I'm assuming similar kind of range of motion on the other side I can get that up pretty high let's test his elbow over here yep and wrists yep I'm hoping he'll be able to I'm really hoping I can pose his blaster in his hands I feel like that's sort of like my goal for posing this character curious to see with these with these grips how easy that is sometimes the two-handed guns can be a little bit fussy I really want to sort of pose him with maybe the blaster in one hand and his uh, knife in the other or vibro blade or whatever okay so some upper sort of chest rotation there we can get a, oh we can get oh okay yep all the way around yep that's not stopping cool nice and good flex there don't know really why you need to turn them all the way around but you can do that so his thigh armor doesn't actually impact his leg movement too much there that's about there we're not going to probably get all the way because of the uh just the bulk of the armor against that hip joint there we can go you know pretty far out to the side doing all sorts of kicking movements there we've got a good sort of kneecap armor piece here which is doing a pretty good job of hiding that join there so from the front that looks pretty good I like that it's obviously attached to that upper thigh piece quite nice there and we've got some movement there with the ankles because he's so heavy I'm not really gonna mess with those um 
ankle joints too much I get the feeling because he's a bit top heavy you're really going to want him on a stable base to get him to stand up on a shelf for display and we can see some of those leg sort of joins there from the back and his ankles and his knees yeah all in all pretty good flexibility he kind of reminds me of the Malgus Black series in terms of like the heavy body and the articulation with the armored components and everything there overall I'm happy with that posability his head really does want to move every time I'm sort of accidentally moving him he's just kind of quirking over to the side it's kind of funny okay really happy with that paint job I like it okay let's see how easy it is to put this backpack on him so I'm going to match up with that sort of t-shaped peg okay it didn't kind of snap on it just kind of slid on but I guess that is a good thing that's not too hard I don't see a significant gap sometimes you can kind of see daylight through it does look like a pretty neat and tidy fit there against his back which is good and I guess that's uh, good it doesn't sort of snap so I can take that off it doesn't want to come off like straight away so it won't sort of just get knocked off it does seem to hug on there pretty well so I'm happy with that um, of course that's probably going to make him a little bit more back heavy it's going to be interesting to see how hard it's going to be to get him to balance okay that's not too bad he is standing up reasonably well with that on doesn't look too wonky there from the front okay let's go for the helmet okay let's see how easy it is to get this on okay I'm, I'm just just kind of gently squishing it front to back because I could see that his ears were getting caught and okay that is going to be a very tight fit I am struggling to get it down oh, I thought that might happen doing this oh I'm sad to say I because his neck moves so well did, did I get that all the way down okay I think I got that I can just kind of see a little bit of his jawline under there but I think I think that's on okay it was a little bit stiffer than I thought but I was I was yeah I really wanted to see if I could pose him in it he is one of the characters that he tends to kind of wear it um oh now of course how do I get it off he is one of the characters that tends to lift his helmet half off in the show a lot so I guess you can always do that pose you can kind of just stick it half on if you want to and sort of make it look like he's not wanting to wear his helmet all the way on that day um oh I worry it's going to be one of those ones we accidentally pop the head off trying to get the helmet off because that is really on there oh yeah okay I'm gonna have to fiddle with that a little bit later to try and get that off to take some better photos but yeah I guess for now that is on oh dear okay good to know so I guess you want to decide how you want to display Ricker helmet on or helmet off okay so let's test out how well this knife is going to fit in his leg sheath here on his leg I'm hoping if he just gets his arm out of the way okay it's a snug fit but it does line up pretty well with that top of the of his sheath here with the handle that looks pretty neat and tidy really it was a little bit a little bit of a snug fit but yes it does fit in there nicely so you can it doesn't look too clunky some some weapons just oh they just don't look right when you put them in their sheath okay now I'm curious how this it looks like this strap it, there's like a hole in here and I get the feeling the end of the strap is going to go in that hole or it's supposed to let's let's I'm gonna okay, I'm gonna take that off because I know I'm gonna knock it let's see how well I can do this and it's gonna be hard to kind of show on camera what I'm doing too because this is fiddly okay so just put that strap kind of just tucking the tip of it into that hole and it does it does hold it there 
Okay, I've got to get your arm back. And I get the feeling it's going to be one of those ones if you're just a little bit rough with it, it's going to pop straight off because it's it feels like it doesn't click in there. It's just kind of perched in there. But it is, it does seem to be holding in there reasonably well, which I'm kind of impressed that that kind of looks pretty cool. So if I put his backpack back on, let's see if I can pose. Yeah, and that just kind of comes back off. I'm going to see how well I can get him to hold his two weapons. Because sometimes these, the grips of the blasters are a little bit wonky. Oh, that went in really nicely. Okay, I'm happy with that. I even got managed to get his fingers gripped around there nicely. You yeah, got the trigger finger. That looks good. And then let's see how well he can hold this knife. Okay, let's get in there. There we go. Okay, so now he's got all his accessories on. And he stands up pretty well. I'm happy with that. He's even like leaning a little bit forward and he's not really, not toppling too bad. Might just tip him a little bit back at his, at his ankles just a little bit, balance him out. There. Oh, he looks cool. I like that. Oh, now i got to unbox all the rest of them so I can put them all together. He looks really cool. I like, oh, I love the Bad Batch. I like the character designs. I like the characters. And I really like the way that this really feels like Wrecker. I think this looks really cool. I like all those paint details. I'm glad that I got good paint jobs, you know, I don't know if he, if, you know, whether that's common or not because of the blind boxes, you can't really compare with others on the shelf, but he's got good paint. I like that he can hold his weapons fairly well. Some of the Star Wars figures, oh, it's a bit of a job to get them to hold anything or just to stand up and pose. Obviously, because he's heavy, you got to just watch his balance, but overall, He's a bit sturdier than I was expecting, particularly when you go and put a backpack on a top heavy figure. And now I can play around with some of his poses. I think he looks really cool. So try and pose him with his blaster, blaster up a little bit. There. Oh, that's cool. I'm happy. This has been a great unboxing. I love it when you just like, yeah, you just really appreciate a, a figure or a collectible. When you get it out of the box, you get to play around with it a little bit, see it in person. This one is really resonating with me. I think he's really cool. I can't wait to build a super cool Bad Batch Black Series display. This is so cool. I really hope we get more figures from the third season as well so that we can get sort of like the progression of the characters and their looks and armor. He's really cool. I keep saying that, but he's cool. I like him. Very, very cool. Now I just got to set up all the rest of them. There you have it. I know I'm gushing. I just, he's so cool. And I will try and see if I can take that helmet off to do some other photos because yes, that is unfortunately... A uh, very tight fit. That is my one critique, I think, is if it just, I know there is a, a fine line between trying to get things to go on well and, and looking like a bobblehead. So I do understand that. I do appreciate that. And yeah, I'm not sure which way I'll display him. But yeah, for now, I am glad that it fits him and it looks in a good proportion to his body. So I think it's one of those things where you can decide how you want to display him and either put the helmet on or just sort of leave it as something that he can hold as an accessory. But yeah. Thank you so much for watching my Black Series Wrecker Mercenary Gear unboxing. I like it. Check out the blog for more photos to see some of these fabulous details up close. Check out our other videos for more Star Wars unboxings including Black Series, TVC, Micro Galaxy Squadron, Funko Pop Vinyl and many more. Catch you in the next video and as always may the force be with you. If you enjoyed this video go ahead and give it a like, check out our other videos and subscribe for alerts about new uploads. Thanks for watching and may the force be with you.